your girl Shalane. I'm back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to discuss the child tax credit and what's the hold up with our money. And guys, we actually have some good news. Then we're going to talk about how they want to raise the retirement age. We have about a lot of money that you're leaving on the table for your children. Maybe you know about it. Maybe you don't know, but that's why your girl is here because I'm going to inform you about this money that you can get for your children as well. So if you want to know where the money reside, darling, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned. Your girl's got you covered. Now, if this is your first time tuning into my channel, hi, hello, hey, friends. My name is Shalay, and here on this channel, we discuss shopping, saving, and everything in between. I would love to have you a part of my internet family. Super easy. Click the big old red subscribe button down below, and you're in just like that. And while you're at it, if you want to try out Amazon Prime, you can try it out absolutely free by clicking the link in the description box or in the cards. Now, guys, let's go ahead and jump right into it because President Biden told voters last night. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump right into it because President Biden told voters last night in Nevada that he will revive the expanded COVID era child tax credit. Like, what? He said he's going to do it. He's going to make it happen. So last night in Nevada, he did say that he's going to revive the COVID era child tax credit. He said, we are going to bring back the child tax credit to cut poverty in half. Now, he said this while he was talking to an audience. They were asking him questions at a campaign event in Reno, Nevada. We all know right now it's election season. He is on the road. He's talking to people. And he said, hey, it grows the economy when women are able to go to work knowing that they can have a safe place for their children. It also grows the economy in terms of education as well. Now, remember, in his State of the Union speech, he talked about bringing back the child tax credit. He also highlighted, like, the impact of early childhood education, and he expanded the need on um, having access as well. He talked about FAFSA. Remember, that State of the Union speech, if you haven't watched it, I do have a video on it, but he talked a lot about education and child care as well as the child tax credit. He said a lot of people haven't had the advantage of others. They may come from a home that doesn't have the same background, that doesn't have the same educational background, that doesn't even have books in the house. So he has said what he has found out is that with significant studies being done, that if you in fact have circumstances where you started as a kid in preschool, let's just say at the age three, right? maybe even four or five, that they have a 50% better chance, 50% to go to school all 12 years through college if they have that access. So this is what he's doing. This is what he's campaigning. Now, guys, are you convinced that the child tax credit is coming back? A lot of people online I was reading, they was like, look, they'll tell you anything. It's voting season again. The Democrats are throwing around money and saying all this stuff like it's a Black Friday deal. I don't know. I Look, I don't make the news. I just report it. Now, also speaking of the expanded child tax credit and being stranded in the U.S. Senate by GOP comparisons to welfare. So look, they said the reason right now for the opposition is that the taxpayer who earns no income for a year could still qualify for the expanded child tax credit. Now, remember, we told you you had to have at least $2,500 in income to get the expanded child tax credit, but Republicans are arguing that that provision would encourage parents to drop out the workforce, push the child tax credit into a welfare program. So this is why it's being contested as well. Now, even though you have to have $2,500, remember in the bill, it has a look back provision that would allow households to claim their previous year's annual income on their tax return if it was higher than their current year earnings. So say this year, if you lost your job or something and you didn't make that $2,500, well, they could go back and look at last year, hey, you were working, you were doing all the things right and you can still maximize from that child tax credit if there was like an illness, caregiving duties, anything that interrupted your work. The Republicans, they don't want that, okay? So as is as the legislation is written right now, families would have the option to look back, they're saying, to their 2024, 2025 tax returns. They're going back and forth. But Senator Ron Wyden, who is the chair of Senate Committee Finance, he said the, he said the original sponsor of this tax package, he said, look, Talks are ongoing, 
but I don't want to get down into specifics. I'm not going to comment right now exactly where it stands because you can't do that if you want it done. So he's pretty much like, we can't talk about this and keep putting it out there. We're trying to get it done. So they asked him on March 12th and they, they asked about the negotiations and he said, I'm talking to all my colleagues as well. He said, we got a full court press. The 2023 tax filing deadline is coming up and we're pulling all the stops as well. He said, my timeline, that was yesterday, okay? And he said, I mean, I have been working for weeks we got the 357 votes in the house. We're pulling out all the stops as well. Now, I think he's trying to do everything, guys, but we all know that the Senate is scheduled to go on a two-week recess beginning on March 25th. They're always on recess, okay? <laughs> They're always on recess. But all right, guys, so let's go ahead and move on to the House Republican budget that calls for raising the retirement age for Social Security. So here's a new budget by the House of Republicans that wants to raise Social Security retirement age for future retirees and restructuring Medicare for everyone. Now, these proposals are unlikely to become a law this year. Um, but it does reflect on how many Republicans will seek to govern if they win the 2024 elections. So the budget was released yesterday, yesterday by the Republican Study Committee. And this was a group of about 170 House GOP lawmakers, including a lot of allies of the Republican presidential nominee, Donald Trump. Now, for Social Security, the budget endorses more of a modest adjustment which is like an increase to the retirement age for future retirees to account for increasing in the life expectancy. It also calls for lowering benefits for the higher earner beneficiaries as well. Then it also emphasizes that those ideas are not designed to take effect immediately. So this budget does not cut, nor will it delay retirement benefits for any senior in the near future. So it'd be like people like me or a little bit older, you know, this coming into it, we probably would experience the cuts. Now the new budget does call for converting Medicare to a premium support model, echoing a proposal that the Republican former speaker, Paul Ryan had rallied support for. So under this plan, they would do where traditional Medicare would compete with private plans and beneficiaries would be given subsidies to shop for policies of your choice. So the size of the subsidy could be pegged to the average premium or the second lowest price in a particular market, says the budget. Now this one, if it passed, it would take effect. They also had some budget um, endorsement bills regarding like the abortion and IVF as well. So what do you guys think about increasing the retirement age? Even though some of you that are watching this video, you might not be affected by it, but probably those that are in their 50s or would be going into retirement would be. Also, what do you think about the Medicare? Because that would affect you as well. And being able to pick your own plan or pretty much having plans that were more similar to like the private plans that are on the market right now. I don't know in regards, what does that mean for money? You guys will have to comment and tell me down below. Does that mean you would pay a little bit more? For those plans or not. But speaking of children and money, a lot of you guys are leaving money on the table. First, we're gonna go ahead and talk about this guaranteed income program in California, and then I'm gonna tell you how to get this money. So there's a new guaranteed income program in Fresno County, California. So if you are Huron as well as 93706 zip code in Southwest Fresno, well, you can be selected to participate in a new guaranteed income program. This will go ahead and pay people $500 a month for one full year, but to be eligible for the $500, you must live in Huron as well as make less than $35,000 a year, or you can live in the 93706 zip code in Southwest Fresno as well, and you earn less than $30,000. You have to be over 18 and pregnant or have at least one child that is five years old or younger. Now, the applications opened up for this on March 15th. They're gonna go through May 15th. You can apply both in person and online as well. But now, speaking of California, this is where you can get the money for your children, guys. They also are giving out $500 to eligible low-income students. 
So they're saying a lot of people are not signing up to claim the program to give kids money in college savings accounts. Now, according to the program, the details of it is for low income public school students. They are awarded $500 in a Cal Kids account if they are in grades one through 12 through the 2021-2022 school year. If they were enrolled in first grade between 2022 and 2023 school year and any other year, they will give you an additional $500 deposit for students that are identified in foster care or even for students that are classified as homeless. So as long as children were born in California during that period or they were enrolled in school, but any parent that had a child after June of 2023, you only will be given $100. So pretty much if they were born or they were in school in 2021, 2022, they get $500. So pretty much you don't get the money to yourself, but they are giving an account for your child $500. It will go into like a 529 account, which is like a college savings account. And then they will be eligible to have this money when they turn 18 as well. Now, the California Department of Education, they do go ahead and determine the eligibility based on the students that have been identified as low income under the state's local control funding formula. If your child is receiving free or reduced lunch, you guys more than likely will qualify for this as well as like the California Department of Public Health. They provide information for newborns where they're trying to get it registered. But California is not the only state that's doing this, guys. Like in New York, public school parents, they're not taking advantage of the free money for college savings as well. So more than 130,000 New York City public school parents they are leaving free money on the table as well when it comes to this college fund. And critics say that, you know, maybe the enrollment process is a little bit harder for some, but it's called the NYC Kids Rise College Savings Program. This launched in 2022 all across the city. And the goal was to go ahead and make higher education more attainable for students. So the program makes an initial investment in New York of $100 in scholarship money for all new kindergarten first as well as second grade students and then they'll continue they'll have this through like it's like a general account but it's managed by the kids rise nonprofit now parents you are obviously encouraged to go ahead and set up the account you can connect separate individualize this account where they can save like their own money you can add to the money as well but it also as long as you do this it can make them eligible for an additional 175 dollars in reward once you complete all the steps so they give you 100 initially you said you go ahead and set up the account they give them 175 dollars again and then they can contribute money like periodically they have different incentives that you do they will go ahead and put that money in your child's account but they said very few parents have made it through the finish line to collect any cash rewards that are available as well, or they just didn't open the savings account. But I'm going to say you guys just did not know that this program existed, so no worries at all. If they don't want to go to college, it's okay. They can use that money at that point to either buy a house, go to trade school, do something. It is their money. It is free money, and it's an account that you can have for your child. And that's it, guys. This is all that we have. Let me know when you be enrolling your child in one of the baby bonds or 529 scholarships. Would you be taking advantage of this free money? What do you think about the child tax credit? Do you think it will be returning anytime soon? Or is this just another election hocus pocus and nothing will happen at all? And as always, grab you some Amazon Prime. It is absolutely free. I mean, you don't have to enter a credit card information or anything. And um, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will talk to you later, Gator. Bye, guys.